Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. Website can be found at scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives. That's where you go to support this mission of truth. We're looking for some wisdom, some encouragement from God's Word today. We're looking at Psalm 5, Proverbs 10, and then we're going to read from Wisdom 4 out of the Apocrypha. Open up your hearts. Let God's word and wisdom and encouragement strengthen you this morning. I don't know about you, but I could use it. And I'm sure many of you feel that way this morning too, where you just really need to be encouraged by God's word. Let's have a look, shall we? Psalm 5 to start, not very long, about 10 verses here, 12 verses. Let's begin. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Please note, before we get too far in, a couple of things. First, the Bible talks a lot about seeking God early. Seeking God in the morning. I have found, you know, even if I didn't have to get up super early while it's still dark and everybody else is asleep to do my prayer time and to do my study time and to record this podcast, if I didn't have to do that just from like a logistical standpoint because I have to go to work, you know, and all of that, even if I didn't have to go to the day job, I would still do it. Because there's just something about the quiet of the morning. There's something about seeking God early, seeking God first thing that just transforms your life. And to create, if you haven't created that habit and you have the ability to, the freedom to, uh, I would highly encourage you to do so. He says, My voice shall thou hear. In the morning, in the morning, will I direct my prayer unto thee, I will look up. And then he starts to talk about how God hates wickedness, evil. That's not a thought or a conversation that's had within the faith today. The idea that God would hate something just seems unsearchable, unthinkable. Oh God, how could God hate anything or anyone? Well, a bulk of the Bible talks, <laughs> a bulk of the Bible, re- there's parts that reference often. Like there is things that God abhors. He hates, one of the things he hates the most, according to scripture, is deceitfulness, lying. Even Revelation talks about how the all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. He hates those who open their mouth to deceive others. Listen to what he says. Psalm. The the psalm we're reading today, verse 6. We'll start with verse 5. Actually, let's start with verse 4 and read those three verses again, and then we'll continue on. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. In other words, deceitfulness. That's what leasing means. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Continuing on. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear where I worship toward thy holy temple. 
Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Please note the first, uh, when I pre-read this, that verse jumped out at me. Make right before my face, right? Let's read that again. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. When I read that, I feel like what the psalmist is saying is, make it plain, make it obvious. Like, what is the way? What is the righteous path? Make that way right before my face, like, so I can't miss it. Because around me is, is I'm constantly surrounded by wickedness and deceitfulness, and I want to do what's right, so please make it right before my face so I know what to do. Verse 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteousness, or for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. That is our psalm for this morning. Let's move on. Let's look for some wisdom here in Proverbs chapter. We're ready for chapter 10. Let's begin. Verse 1. The proverb of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father. But a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. But righteousness deliver from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casts away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Please note, in other words, as the Proverbs and Solomon himself speak about often, laziness and laziness, slothfulness, that will lead to poverty. But those who work hard, who are diligent, who persevere, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Verse 5. He that gathereth in the summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in the harvest is a son that causes shame. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. A wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. He that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covers all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. A rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. 
He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuses reproof erreth. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Please note that, again, this is a constant theme in the books of wisdom. There's wisdom in keeping your mouth shut. You don't have to be heard. Not every opinion you have needs to be heard. You don't always have to have the last word. You don't always have to be right and everybody know that you were right. Let's continue on. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. I'm sorry, I read the wrong verse. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Verse 20. The tongue of the just is a choice silver, the heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is as a sport to the fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As a whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. As vinegar to teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the slugger to them that send him. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Please note that's an important truth to understand from a doctrinal standpoint. When it's all said and done, what happens is, is the righteous... God's children will inherit the earth. The wicked will be removed, bundled like weeds tossed into a fire. Two more verses. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue, in other words, perverse tongue, shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness that is the end of our proverbs let's quickly quickly read from the book of wisdom from the apocrypha we're going to read chapter four let's see what it has to say for us this morning and then we will be we will be finished for today Wisdom, Chapter 4 Better it is to have no children and to have virtue. For the memorial thereof is immortal because it is known with God and with men. When it is present, men take example at it, and when it is gone, they desire it. It weareth a crown, and triumpheth forever, having gotten the victory, striving for undefiled rewards. But the multiplying brood of the ungodly shall not thrive, nor take deep rooting from bastard slips, nor lay any fast foundation. For though they flourish in branches for a time, yet standeth, yet standing not last, they shall be shaken with the wind." And through the force of the winds they shall be rooted out. The imperfect branches shall be broken off. Their fruit unprofitable, not ripe to eat, yea, meat for nothing. 
For children begotten of unlawful beds are witness of wickedness against their parents in their trial. But though the righteous be prevented with death, yet shall they be in rest. For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time, nor that is measured by number of years. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men, and unspotted life is old age. He pleased God and was beloved of him, so that living among sinners he was translated. Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest that the wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. Please note. It's saying here that uh, it's not really about the length of years so much as it is about a spotless life, walking in righteousness, gray hair. Interesting verse, verse 10. He pleased God and was beloved of him so that living among sinners he was translated removed. He lived among sinners, but God removed him. Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceitful beguile his soul. God took him away for his own protection, for to protect his own heart, because he's righteous and he lives among sinners, and he doesn't want that. I'm sure there's many ways to take this verse. The way I'm receiving it is that sometimes God's people seem to die early and to die young while the wicked just continue to live forever, it feels like, right? We talk about the animated corpses that rule this world. Sometimes God takes the righteous away to spare them. And ultimately... At the end of all things, the righteous are going to be resurrected, brought back, and they inherit the earth while the wicked are resurrected only to go back, only to go into eternal damnation. So sometimes it's God's mercy. We're almost done. Let's continue on. Verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. And the wandering of conspicuous death undermined the simple mind. He being made perfect in a short time fulfilled a long time. For his soul pleased the Lord, therefore hasted he to take him away from among the wicked. This the people saw and understood it not, neither laid they up this in their minds, that his grace and mercy is with the saints. And he hath respect unto his chosen. Thus the righteous that is dead shall condemn the ungodly which are living. And youth that is soon perfected the many years and old age of the unrighteous. For they shall see the end of the wise and shall not understand what God in his counsel hath decreed of him. And to what end the Lord hath set him in safety. They shall see him and despise him. But God shall laugh them to scorn, and they shall hereafter be vile carcass, and a reproach among the dead forevermore. For he shall rend them and cast them down headlong, that they shall be speechless, and that he shall shake them from the foundation, and they shall be utterly laid waste, and in sorrow and in their memorial shall perish. And when they cast up the accounts of their sins, they shall come with fear. And their own iniquities shall convince them to their face. And that is the end. You see, we're all going to stand one day before God. The books are going to be opened. There's going to be no question. No question about it. They will agree with their condemnation. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I pray you've been blessed this morning and strengthened this morning. I'm excited to start another year of going through God's Word. I do ask for your prayer this morning.
for me and for my family. As you can imagine, the attacks never end. Bombarded month after month. But God is always faithful and kind and merciful. So please pray for me and my family. Thank you for your support. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.